So if there's one muscle that we get asked about all the time and is super crucial to upper limb function, it's the biceps brachii muscle. Let's dive into our 3D anatomy model to show you what it's all about. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's dive into our 3D anatomy model to talk all about the biceps brachii muscle, starting with its name. So biceps brachii. Biceps refers to the fact that it has two heads. As we can see here, we have a long head and a short head. More on that in a second. And brachii is in reference to the fact that this is a structure of the arm. If we think about some of the other key structures like the brachial artery, which runs right through the arm, the brachialis muscle, and even the triceps, which anatomical name is triceps brachii because it's in relation to the arm. So as we said, we know that this muscle has two heads. It has a long head and a short head. Once again, we're going to touch upon the long head of biceps first, and then we'll move on to the short head. So the long head, the reason it's the longer head is because it travels over a slightly longer distance than its short head. We can see that it runs through the bicipital groove. This is a small indentation in the proximal humerus and the tendon is kept in place by the transverse humeral ligament so that therefore this tendon sits in a nice little groove kept snug by the position of this ligament. So from here, the long head of biceps tendon runs over the top of the superior aspect of the humerus and it inserts into a tubercle called the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. Now let's break that down. Supra meaning superior, glenoid referring to the glenoid of the scapula which is effectively the socket that creates the ball and socket of the shoulder joint. And then tubercle just refers to this little bony bump or prominence that allows the long head of biceps tendon to insert into. However, of course, there's another crucial aspect to this because the long head of biceps tendon also partially attaches to the glenoid labrum. Now, the glenoid labrum is this ring of cartilage that runs around the glenoid itself. And we know that the long head of biceps tendon also has a secondary attachment to the labrum itself. And that gives rise to a very specific condition called a slap tear, where a trauma can pull that long head of biceps tendon anchor away from that labrum, which can tear an aspect of the labrum. And we've got a brilliant video for you all about slap tears, and you can find the link for this at the end of this video. So moving on from there, let's now move on to the short head of biceps. And this attack this originates from the coracoid process and really there's not too much more to write home about regarding the short head because it's not hugely involved in pathology as much as the long head and that's probably a really important feature to note in itself. So now let's move on to the distal insertion and we can see here that the long head and the short head effectively join together to create the biceps muscle belly and then they converge into a central tendon distally and this inserts into the radial tuberosity of the radius. This quite simply is a little prominence like we had with the supraglenoid tubercle and it's here on the anterior surface of the radius. Now, we know that the distal biceps tendon runs over the cubital fossa, and the cubital fossa is this little anterior crease that we can see at the front of our elbow, and the idea being is that this is a really good place to actually palpate this tendon if you need to. And so if you feel that you're trying to locate the distal biceps tendon in that cubital fossa and you just can't feel it, you ask the patient to resist your movement and you just can't feel it, it could be because that distal biceps tendon has been ruptured. So look out for that in your practice. So now let's talk about the actions or functions of this muscle. And it has two primary roles, which are elbow flexion, as we all know, but its slightly lesser known primary function is supination of the forearm. It's actually a really crucial movement that this muscle produces. When our patients have a biceps tendon rupture, we see that that supination movement is lost more focally than the elbow flexion because we have 
other muscles which have a main role in elbow flexion as well. And the biceps brachii also has a slightly weaker role in shoulder flexion, as you can probably imagine from its origins from the supraglenoid tubercle and the coracoid process. Now, those different movements and the biceps brachii muscle as a whole is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. This nerve is a terminal branch from the brachial plexus. And if you want to remember the key muscles that are innervated by this nerve, just remember BBC. And that's because those three muscles are the first B, the brachialis muscle, the second B, obviously, the biceps brachii muscle, and the C is the coracobrachialis. So BBC, nice little way of remembering it. And then finally, let's talk about the blood supply for the biceps brachii, which comes from the brachial artery, which is one of the major arteries running through the upper arm. So, that ends this anatomy tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And we do have some brilliant other videos specifically looking at different pathologies of the biceps brachii muscle, including a long head of biceps tendinopathy, a long head of biceps tendon rupture, and a distal biceps tendon rupture. And you can check out these around the screen. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid. We'd love to see you again really soon here on Clinical Physio.